Oranges in No Man's Land, Chapter 6 The rest of the evening passed in a daze. Mrs Zainab stood up after a while and went out through our curtain. I could hear her talking to some women on the other side, and then came their low murmurs of sympathy. I sat down beside Granny. A black hole of nothingness seemed to have opened up in front of me. Granny, you can't die. You mustn't. What am I supposed to do? I can't manage on my own. You know I can't. I should have been feeling sad, I suppose, but instead I was angry and terribly afraid. Granny opened one eye and tried to fix it on me, but it wandered away. You'll be all right. Big girl, good girl, look after Mrs. Zainab. She'll... She can't look after us. She's not our family. Please, Granny, don't die. I was calling to her loudly now, my voice breaking up with tears. Then I felt arms lifting me away. I was hustled through the curtain and two other old women took their place beside Granny. Mrs. Zainab fetched Latif and Ahmed and made us lie down to sleep beside Samar when it started to get late. Don't worry, don't worry, she said. God is great. He sees our suffering. If it's his will, he'll spare her. Go to sleep now. You need your strength. Whatever happens, I'm your friend. Slowly, the countless people in that crowded flat settled down to sleep, and soon... There was silence, except for a few bursts of coughing, <coughs> some loud snores, and quiet murmurs of the two old women who were watching beside Granny. I lay with my eyes open, looking up at the distant white ceiling. A terrible loneliness was making me shiver, as if I was being gripped by the chill of winter. But an idea had sprouted in my head, and it was growing clearer all the time. I've got to do it, I kept telling myself. I've got to find Dr. Layla. It's not far across the green line. I could just slip through the ruins and out the other side. Who would want to hurt me anyway? I'm only a child. I tried to plot in my mind the route I'd have to take. I'd walked through the old streets of downtown Beirut quite often before the fighting had begun. Mama used to take me on Fridays to visit Granny at Dr. Layla's house. I'd never noticed the way particularly. But I reckoned I could find it. The roads were quite straight. You just had to go on down the long main road and you'd get to the berge in the middle of old Beirut. The invisible green line dividing the city ran right through the berge, which was a huge open square. It would be too dangerous to cross. I'd have to circle round through the streets to the north of it, and once I was beyond the berge, I would find my way quite easily. Several times during that long night, I sat up and groped for my flip-flops, stealing myself to set out at once, but then a burst of distant gunfire or the crump of an exploding bomb made me lie down again. It was dangerous enough trying to cross the green line in the daytime. It would be total madness at night, when gunmen stalked the streets, armed to the teeth and as jumpy as cats, ready to fire at the slightest sound. So I lay back down again. I must have slept for a while, but I woke very early and waited and waited for the dawn.